If I want a sky on my level, I could bring in a skybox package. Beautiful. Uh, if I want, in fact, let me just do that skybox package real quick. So many different packages. Unily works through these Unily packages, and we're going to get to the Unily packages a little bit later. Yeah. This here, my friend, is what you were talking about was added in their 2D support. Absolutely. So this little drop down here used to not exist because Unity was always a 3D tool. So mm -hmm. they've added these, and you can still mix 3D in a 2D game. Actually, a 2D game really is still a 3D game. You just happen to have your camera fixed. Right. And Carl's going to be covering 2D in our very next session. So let's go ahead and create this project. And every time you open a project or do a new project, Unity will close, come back in again. And that decompressing, if you saw right here, that's happening, that's because I checked off the Skybox package, and it's just bringing in a bunch of sky images right now. We're going to close this little dialog here. And I'm going to go to my default layout, which everybody will see the first time you load Unity. You can always reset your layout. So in Visual Studio, every now and then, because I'm always clicking around pretty fast, moving windows around, it, it's inevitable I do this and I mess up my windows. Everybody does that at some point. You're like, uh, OK, how do I get back to my interface? Yeah. You can just change them up here. Go to any layout you want and change them around. Everyone has their preference. Do you, uh, do you prefer one, one visual style over another? I typically use default, and okay. then uh, depending on this, the monitor I'm on, I will go switch over to 2x3. Two 2x3 by three. Two ah. by three is good because you can see this uh, game tab, which we'll talk about shortly at the same time. Yes. So I'm going to start out in default here because that's what everybody, the first time they open it, will see. And in our interface here, this is where we are doing our scene design. This is a scene. And in a scene in Unity, you cannot see anything without a camera. Thankfully, hmm. in any new scene, if I do File, New Scene. Looks like one's included for us. One's always included there. And thank you, Unity, you also give me an audio listener. So you cannot see anything in a scene without a camera, which is there by default. Yes. And you can't hear anything without an ear, which happens to be an audio listener component. This essentially serves as our starting point, our eyes and ears within the world. Yep. So it's there. You don't have to worry about that. So this is our scene view here. Now, everything that's in our scene is over in this window here. This is our hierarchy window. And this happens to be pretty empty right now because we have just a single camera in our scene. So if I highlight that item, then we get the properties of it over here in the inspector window. And the inspector window shows some basic properties. We're going to talk about these game object properties coming up next. OK. But all these other components get added. Yeah, it looks like you have a bunch of different things there. If I want to create a cube, for example, Click away from it, click on it. I can see all of my cube's properties. Now, navigating in here, I highly, 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 highly recommend okay. a three-button mouse. And you're like, well, what is a three-button mouse? Oh, you find it's kind of difficult to do this on a, a laptop touch. It's, it's, you can do the key commands like Control-Alt uh, or right. Shift-Alt, right mouse click, and then zoom in on your trackpad, or you can pin zoom. There are different commands that you can use on there. Sounds like it'd be a bit of a keyboard ninja. Yes, yes. If you are very comfortable on the keyboard, you can do it. Sometimes when I don't have a mouse with me, I do it, but I highly recommend a, it's a two-button mouse with a clickable scroll wheel is what a three-button mouse is. All right, navigating around here, my scroll wheel zooms me in, zooms me out, and you'll find that most of the time that you spend in Unity, uh, in the interface, doing your scene design here, is dragging and dropping objects in, moving things around, rotating around to see how they look, because 3D space is very confusing at first. Mm -hmm. It might look like this cube is sitting down on the Earth, and yet when I go ahead and I rotate, if I move up here like this and rotate, I can see that that cube is actually pretty far above my ground there. Yeah. So it's going to take you a little bit. The first time you open Unity, you're going to be a little confused trying to navigate around and moving things around. Right click to. Uh, zoom around like that. Click your center mouse wheel to pan. Now this equates also to the icons in the toolbar here. Yes. Pan is the same thing as clicking your scroll wheel. And these we're going to talk about shortly when we get to talking about game objects. Let's look at the next window down here, our project window. This is everything that is included in our project. So this roughly maps to what's on the file system here. If I right click on this and show an explorer, it will show me my Unity project here. Now, you might notice that the only folder that you see here happens to be the Assets folder. That's because Unity is tracking these for other internal purposes, and I'll talk about those a little bit later on today. Don't mess with these folders. <laughs> it's typically a bad idea unless you have a specific reason that you know what you're doing. Right. Virtually everything you can do in the Unity's interface here, if you need to drag in an image, you can just literally take it from Explorer. Let's assume this was an image, and I can just drag it into my project. Mm -hmm. So that works. Don't mess with the file system. And also, it'll here. update things for you as well on the fly. So if you start adding new scripts, uh, it'll quickly um, rebuild the project with the scripts in real time. Absolutely. 
Because I brought in that skybox, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something really cool. Just like that, because wow. I brought in that package. Now, if you recall, that was the skybox little package that I checked off here. Now, any of these packages, you don't have to bring them in now. So don't feel like you have to check those all off. You can always bring them in later through assets import package. Perfect. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes less is more because more is more in this case. <laughs> Overcomplicate your project, especially when starting off. Yes, and if you're like me, I'm always running out of space on my system. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so these will make your project size grow, and uh, because it's media and files, your project can get pretty big pretty fast. Yes. Now, the coolest thing about Unity here is play mode. I click play, I'm gonna go from my scene view, and it's gonna switch over to my game view here. So I'm playing my game. I can't do anything with it here, I can't interact with it in any kind of way, because there's no code to do that. Right. There's nothing telling Unity to interact with the scene, it's just a camera that's looking out at my scene. And I can do this in real time. So I'm playing my game right now, literally. See these buttons highlighted up? I'm playing my game. I can pause it and advance frame by frame. Yes. So if I need some real fine level uh, physics testing, mm -hmm. maybe I need to see frame by frame when objects collide, I can literally just advance frames like that. You know, something that caught me a few times at first was I would press play, but forget that I had it playing yes. in the background. Is there any way to um, let me know in a, in a not so subtle way that I'm actually playing? Absolutely. So, every single Unity developer I have ever talked with, and I always call this the most important setting in Unity, has lost work in Unity because of this. So what David's talking about here is I'm playing, and I forget that I'm playing. I come back here, I'm like, all right, let's start des uh, designing my level some more. I think that is the best cube of all time. I want to duplicate it out a bunch. That was a nice cube. Very nice cube. In fact, it might be perfect. So I've added a bunch of these perfect cubes to my scene. Okay. Maybe I like sugar cubes in my, in my sunny sky. Kind of, kind of time consuming to <laughs> start to add more and more things over here. Now, when I get out of play mode here, watch what happens. All Whoa. gone. Where'd they go? When that first happened to me, I thought, what is this buggy software? And then I realized, user error. <laughs> yep. All my fault. So what's happening here, uh, play mode is a playground for you to test your game. So that's exactly what this is. You're playing it, you can test things out, duplicate it. Whatever you want to do, tweak settings, see how it looks. When you're done, it goes back to the way it was. Uh, there is a plugin you can get from the Unity Asset Store that will actually um, apply those changes at runtime. Ah, I need to look into this. But let's do my favorite setting here. Edit preferences, colors, play mode tints. You notice how it's uh, kind of in its own little setting by itself. Yes. <laughs> they should have a big box around this, and when you open this dialog, have like a neon sign pointing over here. Yeah. So open that up and choose... I used to do red, now sometimes I'll change the color a little bit. I think it's not blinding to the eyes. And that might be blinding. We'll do orange just because we're coming up on Halloween and not that... That's right. Goodness, it's Pumpkin spice. Halloween. <laughs> when I play this now, see what happens to my interface? I get actually a very Halloween-y looking interface. Yes. We're going to have a Halloween influence theme for you later on today. Uh, when we go over 3D game creation, mm -hmm. there's a very Halloween themed game that we're going to create. I'll tell you the name of it ahead of time. Okay. Zombie Pumpkin Slayer. I like where we're going with ZPS. this. ZPS. Zombies are the hot thing. A year ago, we did Dino Burger, where okay. you uh, shot a burger and killed a dinosaur, because that's why dinosaurs went extinct, ah. if you didn't know that. I, I, I assumed it had come down to them eating just you know, poor burgers from time to time. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do a Zombie Pumpkin Slayer today, yeah, so this is going to be quite fun. Okay. I was talking about the Unity Asset Store here, so actually now is a good time to go over to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. This can be accessed through the web browser or can be accessed inside of Unity yes. through Window, Asset Store. This interface always takes longer to load up. It's got to kind of pull in all the background data, get the latest updates to the store, you know, what's hot and happening today. Sometimes what I like to do is while that's loading, I just take that window and I dock it there just so it's always there for later. Mm -hmm. And that loads up, but typically my workflow is I go through the website. I like navigating this more. We'll see more, a little more, more space to work with as well. I might find, let's say I want a soldier character pack for Mixco, Mixamo. Mixamo provides uh, characters and animations mm -hmm. in the asset store, as well as a couple other cool products. But you would say, open in Unity. And it's going to say, hey, we need to launch this off in the Unity. Do you want that? Certainly. Perfect. Deep links right back into Unity. Now it looks like we're... Import, because this is already on my system. Or if not, uh, download and import. Yes. Bring it right in your project. So it looks like it's basically a zip file containing all of the, uh, the items that would be contained. For the most part. It's uh, a Unity package file, and we're going to yes. look at that uh, shortly, because Unity packages are pretty much everything when you're dealing with uh, redistributable content in Unity. Okay. 
So that actually came into my, let's go back to my default view here, soldier character pack. There we go. So just like that, I've got a soldier. This one was free. Uh, you can buy animations and you can use asset store and apply it to them. If I want, maybe, let's go back here. Looks like you can search by categories and everything. Type in a text field for what you want. Because, again, Halloween is coming up. Yeah. Scary, scary zombies. If I need audio for my project, same thing. Now, for the folks that are learning Unity, uh, one of the things that you want to be very aware of here okay. is they have complete projects here. And that allows you to go in and pick it apart and see things in here. Beautiful. Now, in order to, to do that, though, you don't open a project folder. So, for example, in Visual Studio, you open up a solution or you open up a C-sharp project file or a yes. project file. And here, you actually import it into your project. Same exact thing that we just did with the soldier models. Okay. You do here. You would go into a project. You would say open in Unity. Okay. It loads it up in Unity's interface here. I reset my window layout. That's why it's uh, undocked now. Okay. And once it loads up, you basically bring it into your current project. Yes. Once you bring it into your project, you have to look for the files. And so rather than downloading a whole other one here, let me just save the scene first. We'll control S. We'll call this main. I'm going to open a project I just had. This one was called demo, where I pulled in. Let's find my scenes. Remember I said the scene file icon? Yeah. Is like the most important icon. I have to go in and look for that. I brought in one from the asset store called Destroy City Free. Okay. And in here, I can just search for my scene. Ah, perfect. I've got two scene files in here. I've got my main one here, which is just kind of an empty demo test scene. Okay. I've got destroyed city. Let's go back to my default wow, layout here. Too. So you can see this a little bit better. Now, will you often create a, a folder specifically for scenes? I mean, what is your, your way of organi organizing your project? I do. I'll have a separate folder down here just for scenes, okay. uh, for my scenes. And you will find that a lot of uh, packages you bring in from the asset store do things in their own kind of format. Yeah. So this is destroyed city. And then in there, they have a scenes folder. They have prefabs, which are typically the buildings and things you would place just like that. Okay. Place our own building in there. That's not really lined up. But as long as the folder is inside the assets folder, Unity will be able to see it, correct? Yep. Everything must be in the assets folder, your very top level folder. Just like that for free. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pretty cool. Lighting, environment. Uh, and in this level, I can, I can jump like a superhero. Perfect. So just like that. Pretty neat, huh? Absolutely. So now if I've downloaded some of these projects or, or, or scenes before, um, assets, how can I go back and get them again? Is there uh, um, a bit of the interface that I can find them? Excellent question. So going back into the asset store, and then we wait for this one to load up again. <laughs> I should have docked it and kept it there. Well, the store is pretty large in all fairness. Quite a few good That's things true. to find in there. I heard, I'm not sure if it's true or not, um, that they might be rewriting this little interface here. Hmm. So maybe the speed will be the same as the website. Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. Okay, oh, All right. there we go. That's so cool. the asset store interface is here, right? We just covered that. If you want to see the packages you already own, you go to this guy right here. And here are all the ones that I've bought over time. Perfect. Caution, the asset store is like, if you're familiar with the shopping channel, uh, QVC, or yes, of course. any of the... Uh, <laughs> so they always have really cool specials in there, and they are real specials like this. 24-hour uh, deals. 75 bucks in 24 hours, this will be back to 150. So when I see these, I was like, ooh, I've got to buy them. <laughs> yeah, I'm equally as guilty. Hence my asset list kind of grows and grows and grows. Yep. All right, let's talk about next, game objects and components in your scene. Okay. Game objects are everything, everything. Virtually everything that's in a scene is a game object. So whether you're talking about lights, particle systems, those 3D models we brought in, okay. uh, heads up displays, everything is a game object. If you are a .NET developer, think about system.object in It's really .NET. like the most base level thing we can get down to. Yep, in .NET, virtually everything, not everything, but near everything inherits from system.object. You can kind of think of that same concept in Unity as a game object. It's a simply a name, tag, and transform, and I'll show you those properties inside of Unity. Okay. And the transform is very, 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 very important. Yes. Now, on game objects, we have components. And that's what makes things happen. Because a game object itself is a simple object. Name, tag, and a transform. Right. It's basically a container for everything. It's a container, right. It's an empty location in space. Game objects come to life by having components added to them. Okay. 
And that includes a whole variety of different components uh, and your own custom components as well. You can develop mesh renderers, sprite renderers. If you want to do audio in your scene, that's mm -hmm. also a component, uh, an audio source component. Your camera comes to life by being a component 